Minneapolis would like to know if we know the whereabouts of Shivindi and Shivimbalana, two of Karula's cubs from her previous successful litter. Her most current successful litter are two leopards called Kunyuma in quarantine, and it's believed that it was Kunyuma that was seen briefly with Brent last night. But I don't know where Shivindi and Shivimbalana are at the moment. I think they are somewhere in the sands, possibly south of where we are. But if you'd like to find out, you can possibly check their Facebook pages, which they will no doubtedly have. And that might give you some insights into where about they're moving. There's a strong chance you may go for a drink at the Treehouse Waterhole. We're probably a quarter of a mile away from there. So she may go for a drink and who knows, she may find some potential prey also heading into that area for a drink. Well, the time we've spent with her this morning will give you a good indication of how difficult it is to track down these leopards when we are track, tracking them. She spent the majority of her time in thick blocks and not only moving in one direction through these thick blocks but zigzagging backwards and forwards and while they are in these thick blocks it can be very difficult to track them and find each individual footprint whereas it can be a lot easier when they are on the road. onto the road here. Looks like she's heading towards and if she does continue in the direction she was heading now, she will end up at the treehouse waterhole. So that's good prospects. I'm not sure if we are still live and if you've just got my audio. See if there's any tracks of shadow and, and some dealer in this area. Uh, So we're just checking Red Dam for tracks of shadow and some delay. Uh, nothing yet, so we're going to make our way slowly towards um, where she had that kill yesterday that's been robbed by hyenas and try to see which way she might have moved from there. But uh, it seems like it's been very quiet in Arethusa this morning. And, and, we are trying to find out what's going on, but it seems like all the animals have vacated Arethusa for the day, but I'm sure they're around, I'm just hiding in the drainage lines in the cold. Uh, and we apologize for that breakup uh, with Scott. He's obviously in quite a difficult area where he's following Kruna at the moment, and um, hopefully we'll be back with him shortly uh, while we continue to track. <laughs> Lots of hyena tracks coming from that general area where uh, Shadow had the kill, so I'm quite sure those are possibly the culprits who stole it. Pretty little bird here, white crowned helmet shrike in the grass feeding. And quite often 
known as the Seven Sisters. I can hear a few more calling a little bit further away. Let's just try to sneak forward a little bit. All right, gone. There's the rest of the flock. And off they go. So Mike, Tom and Carol uh, would like me to discuss a little bit uh, about what happened with that leopard attack in the in the Kruger National Park. Um, well, I, I did manage to watch some of the, the footage of it yesterday. Um, very, very, very sad um, to see something like that happen. Um, and from my point of view, without actually knowing what happened beforehand, it is very difficult. That female leopard was definitely uh, um, in, in not very good condition um, and possibly right at the end of her tether. So she saw a, an opportunity, uh, possibly maybe movement or something just triggered uh, triggered her and she then then attacked um, and very difficult to say what happened without actually saying what happened beforehand and only just seeing sort of the highlight clips that people put together but uh, very very sad when that happens it is very very infrequent um, and that animal was definitely in a bad state so it possibly saw an opportunity at a, a theoretical easy meal um, or just a slight bit of movement might have triggered it but um, very very sad to see that happen and it is very very infrequent um, in all my time in the bush I've never ever ever heard of um, a leopard actually climbing on and into a vehicle like that so she must or he must have been uh, in really really bad condition uh, to attempt that. Ooh, no trucks here yet. There's a possibility because she was right on the uh, northern boundary of Arethusa that she just continued uh, to the north. I uh, haven't heard any updates on the radio. No one's found any trucks yet. But we will keep checking very carefully. But back to the Kruger incident. Um, also, things like that may or may not happen in a place like Kruger a little bit more often, just because there are that many more vehicles driving around uh, and that many, m that much more interaction with um, people and vehicles. So it's, it, it, but as again I said, it's very difficult, uh, and everything I say now is speculation, and, and nothing we could be sort of said as gospel, so to speak. But uh, very, very sad and actually quite, for me, very difficult footage to watch. Quick look here for tracks. Doesn't look like anyone's checked this road yet this morning. So, we shall. There have been a lot of vehicles checking where she was and no one seems to have found anything so I think the best bet for us is to take a road that hasn't been explored yet this morning uh, and possibly she might have cut through the block. All of a sudden she very excitedly has got up and she's in the position we can see her now. I'm not sure what she saw or heard. There certainly was something that got her attention and it's got her very excited. Look at her tail twitching from side to side. What could it be? She's really focused. Her ears are not angled towards it. Look at her eyes. Look at her head. Look at her. Um, 
I would give it a second, hold on. It's not an easy business for these leopards to catch their prey, even though they are incredibly stealthy and well camouflaged. It's important to remember that their prey have evolved and adapted over many, many years to escape being eaten. And that's very important if it was too easy for predators to catch their prey. They would very quickly run out of food to eat because they would catch and kill and eat. Oh, here she goes. She may drop down into this riverbed below us, which will be a great vantage point for her to hunt from. Lots of cover. Watch as she begins to lower herself through to the ground. She slinks forward silently, trying to get closer to whatever it is that's up ahead. Like I said a little bit earlier, she is close to the treehouse waterhole. So there could be some other game in this area that's also coming down for a drink. Good opportunity for her to potentially ambush something. What a morning it's been, and it's so great to be able to share it with all of you. At this rate, we could end up spending about three hours with this female, and it's been quite some time that we've been lucky enough to spend a full broadcast with any given animal. Maybe today will be different. I think what I may do is take a short five minute detour and loop around onto the other side of this riverbed in the direction that she's looking. That way we might be able to see what the potential prey is and also just be in a good position to view her and also mean just have two vehicles with you on this side of the riverbed and another two on the other. So giving her a little bit more space as well to do what she needs to do. Take a, a minute or two to get around there. It's always a welcome relief driving on a road again after you've been off-roading for almost the whole morning. Poor old VM's getting thrown around from side to side. I'm certainly in the more comfortable of the seats. VM is not so lucky. And Apologies for bumping you around this morning, but it's all part of the adventure. It is all part of the adventure, and it's an adventure that we love to share with all of you all around the world. And what an incredible concept this is to be able to join us on a live safari, getting to know so much about these awesome animals that we get to, sh to see and share with you. This is what you see. A large herd of impala. They'll come into view shortly. Just gonna find a little spot to stop here. We could possibly be able to see both her and the impala in the same shot. She is quite far from them now. get my binoculars out in order to be able to see where she could be but she's somewhere down there on our right for somewhere at about two o'clock I can't see her but VM has found something very beautiful while we wait a virtual starling glistening and iridescing in the morning sunlight There's a bit of a breeze that's just picked up. Sadly, it's blowing from the leopard towards the impala. But if they don't manage to smell her, this wind will certainly help her approach. 
because the sound of her paws in this dry grass on a still day would be easily detected by the impala, even though she'll try and be as silent as possible. So this windy weather is good hunting conditions provided her scent does not get blown in that direction. There's a small chance that the wind may miss her. There's a lot of impala here that she has to deal with and ideally there would just be one that she could try and catch. With all of these impala here there's so many eyes and ears that could detect her. We just have to be a little bit patient now. Again, we try and be as sensitive as we can in these scenarios so that we ensure that we have as little impact as possible on the situation. And now is a good example of why we need to be patient. We've already had such good views of her this morning, but now we just want to be in the area, in her presence, in case something exciting unfolds. And if it does, even if we don't necessarily see the chase or the takedown, which can be difficult in the thick vegetation here in the Sabi Sands, at least if we're there for, as it's happened, we can sneak in and see what happens next. Or two. I think Lee has just got a long distance visual of her on a termite mount, but she still is on the other side of the riverbed. But it would be nice just first to try and show you. But I don't think it's going to happen for now. Possibly sneak in a meter or two. Okay, well, why don't we get into a better position and find out what Karula's doing? You're not going to miss anything. She's still very far away from these impala. Brent's found, oh, sorry, then. Brent's found another very nice animal that he would like to share with you. So we'll see you a bit later. Welcome back everyone from spots to blotches and we've got a nice male giraffe here on Parathusa. He's going to edge a little bit closer and uh, he looks nice and relaxed. So I uh, hear Karula is doing some really exciting stuff. Awesome. I'm so glad you guys are getting to see that. Um, we're just going to spend another few seconds with this giraffe as he decides to, he's finished eating and walking off down the road light up behind him. Nice, we've been seeing quite a few more giraffe recently, but I'm quite sure you guys are really excited to get back to Karula and whatever she's up to. Um, so we're going to continue on and see what else we can find and enjoy your time with the Queen of Juma. Sorry about that, guys. Um, apparently Scott's dropped into a drainage line and lost signal, so you stuck with me for a little bit longer. So we're going to move a little bit forward and see if we can have another look at this giraffe as he is slowly walking. Looks like he might walk out into a gap there.
So you can see it's a male. And you can see it's a male um, because of those contusions on its, on its forehead and the bald horns. So they get bald from fighting and, and, and those contusions on his forehead become bigger and bigger with age from fighting with other males. So guys, we're going to leave this giraffe. I've just heard some really exciting news. I'm not going to tell you what it is in case they disappear before we get there. But um, so we're going to be going on a bit of a, a Ferrari safari. So hold on. Thank you very much, Mr. Giraffe. But we have uh, places to go and things to see. So hold on, guys. Sorry, I'm going to be going a little bit quicker than usual. But it is worthwhile, I do promise. Quite exciting, I'm very excited, always wonderful to see this particular surprise uh, and I know uh, you guys are going to love it. It seems like the 4th of July is definitely providing so far, um, celebrations all around, even out here in the bush. Um, we're going to try move as quickly as possible not to lose a genre on the back. Fortunately, those long legs, you can wrap them around the tripod and make sure he doesn't disappear. guesses coming in but I'm not gonna tell you um, we're gonna just try and move into that area as quickly as possible uh, so if I disappear from concentration every now and then it's because I'm listening to the game drive radio uh, just trying to get us into that position and get us that sighting sorry one second standing by. Thank 
you very much. I'm probably about seven to eight minutes out. remind Liam about this feather that he kept telling me yesterday was unlucky. It, turned, it seems to be being very lucky uh, today and uh, even last night. everyone and she's difficult to see but if you look very very closely you will notice a leopard sitting absolutely dead still in that vegetation she is still very close to these impala but moving very slowly and cautiously not wanting to blow this attempt just sitting waiting, waiting patiently nearby to see what happens next. Exciting news. I wonder what Brent is rushing off to. You must all be quite excited to find out and hopefully in the next few minutes you will. It's been an action-packed morning. And thankfully there's still about 50 minutes left of the broadcast. So who knows what else may happen during the course of this sunrise safari. Sorry, Delaney, your question was how big is she compared to a lion? Um, a lioness is four times bigger than that. Yeah. Lioness weighs about 120 kilograms, 150 kilograms. She weighs about... Anna Marie, hello. Um, welcome on board with us. Anna Marie would like to know how close would a leopard need to be to a scent mark and able to be able to smell it. I would say probably a couple of meters, but in order to be able to process that smell very closely, she'll go right up to where a previous leopard would have scent marked, sniff against it, and then she'll do a phlegm and grimace. And when they do this grimace, exposing their teeth, they're also exposing a very special organ called the Jacobson's organ, and this helps leopard and other cats to better process smell. So it's another sensory organ used for smelling and they will often smell the exact place where another leopard has scent marked in order to absorb all that information. So I think there's varying degrees they can detect scent from a few meters but process it properly from very very close by. I'm going to creep forward a meter or so we'll get a better view of her. She's looking not in the exact direction of where these impala are all standing, and she's actually looking further off to the right. So there could be other potential prey. It's a very large herd of impala, so maybe it's just spilled over further to the west. <coughs> They'll often use shade and shadows as part of their approach or stalk because it's much harder to see anything moving through a shaded area. And as we can see at the moment, she is sitting in the shade. As soon as she was would move in the sun, her movements would be detected far easier by the prey. I wonder what it is that's up this little riverbed where she's looking. 
I believe she's got it's almost in the opposite direction to where the Impala are. The Impala are behind us or to the left of our vehicle. Would she ever meet up with other leopards? She'll vocalize when she comes into the and that will attract her resident and also, she last year was still communicating with her two fully grown male cubs. So we would often see them come together. And now, currently, she's probably about 50 or 60 meters away from these Impala. It'll be difficult for VM to show you them. They're in quite thick vegetation. But can you see any there, VM? They're over here on the other side of this thick vegetation and there are many of them, maybe about 40 or 50 impala and you can just see their tails wagging there they've got no idea she's here and while we're looking at them you'll see the leaves blowing in the wind giving you a good idea of how strong the breeze is it's kind of blowing into our faces so it's changed ever so slightly in Karula's favor so they shouldn't pick up her scent from where she is sitting at the moment and she'll need to get much closer. She needs to be about four or five meters away from an impala before she triggers her attack. So still lots of work to be done there. All the body she's very focused on something down there. She seems to completely ignore the impala. So the problem is if she goes forward, the wind will carry to the skirt. Some of these are already alert to, to something going on. So as she goes forward, she may give wind to these impalas. We may hear the impala starting to alarm for This is very interesting. She's headed off down into the riverbed, it looks like. And it's great to watch how patient she is and how experienced she is. She's not rushing into this scenario and blowing a great potential hunting opportunity. She's moving very slowly, very cautiously, making sure she doesn't get detected. She needs to be incredibly close to a prey animal. She'll stalk to Leopards them. will know that it's not only the potential prey that they're stalking that could give away her presence, but also squirrels, birds, monkeys, mongooses. So she's factoring all these things into the equation as she stalks forward. She's currently laundering something and she's, she's busy hunting and uh, we'll be here for a few more minutes and we'll get started. Sure, the Karula is currently busy uh, laundering something and we are going to hang out for a few more minutes and then we'll make space for you. So she's now heading in the opposite direction to this herd of impala, which are behind us. So she must have seen or heard something else that she thinks she's got a better opportunity of catching. Possibly Steenbuck or Wartog. It's hard to say, but she's in a good position, and like I say, these windy conditions are certainly in her favor for hunting. We're just going to reposition ever so slightly. And try and keep up with her as she moves through this thick bush. Thank you, we do. <laughs> Okay, 
folks. Well, while we get into position, I believe Brent has finished rushing off to wherever he was going, and he's now ready to show you what he's found. Enjoy. Welcome back everyone. Um, as you can see, what we have rushed to is the Styx Pride or the Styx Breakaway Pride um, with those three little bundles of joy. There are two steeping on the rock there. Um, and strange enough, we were looking for them this morning in this area and they crossed over behind us. And um, so there's actually three adult lionesses here at the moment. So another member of the Styx Pride has seemed to have joined um, there's two with the cubs and there is also a male here um, but I'll show you now so we've got those two cubs lying next to the mom over there we've got another lioness to the left and if we come right in front of me um, there's a lioness there and then under this little quarry bush if we zoom right under the bush is the third cub um, hiding in the shade right there So they are very tired looking kitties and it looks like they've traveled quite a long way today from where I heard where they were yesterday to here is probably especially for little cubs a very very long distance about five or six kilometers. So 4th of July is proving to be very 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 productive for us so far lions and leopards and elephants and buffalo herds what a fantastic morning Isn't that just cute how that little one is using that branch as a pillow? So there is a big male off to the right as well, but we will try have a look at him a little bit later. Probably one of them are timber males. But very, very flat cats at the moment. You can just see the stomachs moving. Uh, the last time I saw these cubs was actually quite a long time ago probably three weeks maybe even a little bit longer ago um, and I know James has seen them in between but I haven't and they definitely have grown quite a bit I think the last time I saw these cubs is when um, Jamie was on interview so on her interview drives we found them that morning so that was the last time I saw these cubs. So we're just going to try to re reposition slightly so the other vehicles can also get a view. definitely have grown quite a bit um, but still at this age there it's going to be they're still very cute and you're going to still see a lot of those little cub spots um, and we're going to be it's going to be great to watch them grow over the next few months just repositioned almost perfectly for us and mom looks like she's standing up 
Uh, they look like they are quite happy. Well, I'm just going to lie down in the shed. Boom. And I don't know if you can see the mail from where you are, Jean-Jean. And you can see there's one of those big Matimba males lying flat. Probably about 25 meters from the rest of the pride. Those of you who are wondering what that machine gun-like sound is, don't worry, it's just my camera. I'm taking a few shots um, of the little one. And if we have a look at this lioness there, that one there, John Dan top frame, if we go in on her teats, we can see that's the mother. And you can see the suckle marks around the around the teats. And this little guy has moved slightly, and that looks very comfortable. I'm actually quite jealous. I think I'd like to lie in the, the sun in that position. So that high-pitched noise you're hearing is just another vehicle moving. It's their brakes. There's a bit of sand in the brakes. So you can see that little guy has positioned himself or herself almost perfectly and very very comfortable so guys definitely you should definitely get some screenshots that's probably one of the cute cutest lion sightings you're going to get and um, don't forget to post them on facebook and on twitter and hashtag safari live Hi John, welcome to a fabulous 4th of July. Uh, John would like to know who is the third female we're looking at. John, it's one of the other Styx lionesses, probably one of the oldest Styx lionesses. Um, so there are quite a few Styx lionesses and they would have split. And these two split a while ago, um, but they will join from time to time. They still are related. Hi, Safari. Uh, Safari is just saying it's quite odd that there's a third female here. She wonders whether it's got anything to do with the Matimba sticks argument last week. Um, probably not, Safari. There is a Matimba male here as well. So I would probably say it's, she is a blood relation of the other two lionesses and they might have come across each other and just decided to join up. And when pride split like this for a while, it's not uncommon for um, the pride members to come back together from time to time. It's only when they've been split for a really extended period that they will stop sort of having some of those pride bonds. And most definitely related to the fact is that this third female has joined and hasn't attempted to harm the cubs. So that's probably a very good sign that they are related females. Female looks a little bit older than the other two. Is this one we're looking at here could even possibly be a mom or an aunt
Morning, Anna Marie. Uh, Anna Marie would like to know whether that male Matimba is the hairy belly bellied one or the ginger one. Um, Anna Marie, I can't see from where I am currently, so I'm not going to speculate till we can have a closer look. Such a peaceful setting. It's difficult sometimes to imagine when you see lines like this. Um, they can jump to huge, uh, huge bursts of energy in almost zero time if something happened to one day. But we're not going to leave. We're going to stay with these sleeping, sleeping kitties, and we're going to cross across to Scott, who's still with a feline of a different kind. Perfect timing, everyone, and watch closely here. Karula's about to take a drink, and it looks like we got into the perfect position to watch. We got so lucky, look at this. Oh, she's been on the move quite a lot this morning and she'll be looking forward to quenching her thirst because there's a decent amount of water around the Sabi Sands even though it is very dry there's a lot of water holes Leopard will probably drink once or twice a day depending and aren't we lucky to be watching this Absolutely beautiful. It's a bit of a time-consuming operation, lapping up water with your tongue. Imagine how difficult it would be for us as humans to try and do this. And she's getting a small mouthful each time that tongue of hers laps back into her mouth. And it would be interesting to know how much she'll take on in this sitting. Possibly half a litre or a litre, I'm guessing.
wonder what on the, her next move will be if she'll try and loop back on a herd of impala that were nearby. We'll have to spend some time with her to find out. And while we just wait for the other vehicles to reposition and work out what her next move is, what great news and well done to Brent for getting you into the right place at the right time to see those awesome little cubs. We don't see them very often and I've only seen them probably on a handful of occasions. So if it's your first time tuning in, you've got very lucky this morning. Karula, the elephant, the buffalo, and now a lion with tiny little cubs. Also interesting to know that another, I think it's an older Styx lioness that splits up just like the two with the cubs, splits up into another pride of two is also with them as well as a big male so really exciting stuff over there where's Karula gone? really interesting that she's almost actually passed up that impala that herd of impala that she saw and she's decided to move off into another area obviously she weighed up her odds and thought it would not be worth trying to catch them and giving away her position if they did detect her by alarm calls and that way it would make everything else in this area aware of uh, imminent threat so that's possibly why she's decided against it she maybe weighed up the odds and thought it wasn't a good idea and has gone to look for something else to catch okay well, she certainly has moved off, and she is moving into quite a thick area. We're going to try and get up onto a nearby road in order to stay with her. But there is a chance that uh, she heads into thick bush. Sorry, I was just listening to the radio there, and I'm not one for multitasking. There's a road that she seems to be moving parallel along, so we're just going to get onto that road and try and view her from there. But I know this area that she's heading into can be quite tricky to follow leopard in. One of her sons, Kunyuma, used to spend a lot of time at this waterhole and from following him through this area that I know it can get a little bit tricky. Where has she gone? You got her there, Vian? Yep. She's sitting. She is stationary. Okay, folks, so why are we trying to work out what she's doing exactly? Oh, well, let's just wait for her to walk past us one last time. She's just started moving again, and I think we have fortunately found ourselves in the right place. So we'll show you one last view of her, and I'm sure a lot of you are very interested to see some more of those cubs. So after this next view, we're not going to go anywhere, we're going to stay with her in case she comes across anything, but we'll get you back to Brent and the Styx lioness with the cubs. Let's see if she curls her tail up higher as she crosses the road. I really love it when she does this. And her daughter Shadow has got a similar trait, holding her tail up high from time to time. Well, she's about to disappear into some thicker bush. And we're going to send you across to Brent right now as there's a little bit of action over there. Enjoy. We'll see you later. Jonathan, welcome back, guys. Uh, the cubs look like they're moving towards mom. There's the other one to the left. One's already moved. Always just taking over the branch position from the other. Let's have a look. Day sweet. So all three cubs are present. 
Um, we'll show you where they all are. I think this one might move quite shortly, so we're going to wait till that happens. Hi, Juliet from Wyoming. Juliet would like to know, do lion cubs sleep more soundly than adults? Um, they definitely do. Oh, there we go. It looks like on the move. Here we go. Heading towards mom. Looks like might go for a drink while the other two are napping. You can see the other two uh, cubs just behind the one that's sucking. No, mom. <laughs> Mom's in. Mom, not so keen. You might find as soon as this uh, one starts suckling the others, but mom's not having any of it. And you can see they're quite hungry. She got a fright, I think. I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, not sure what she got a fright. Something behind us seemed to give her a bit of a fright. Three, all three cubs are in a little bit of shade provided there. Mom is obviously not so keen on providing milk at the moment. They are all looking a bit hungry, these lionesses. Such sweet little guys. Oof. Definitely grown quite a little bit since I last saw them. They're definitely a bit more mobile uh, and not as clumsy as a, a month ago. Oh, they've actually spotted an aeroplane and that's what they're looking at so intently at the moment. So some guests that are going to be landing uh, to come on safari and the little cubs have spotted the aeroplane and they're watching it. Oh, lost sight of it now but still listening to the direction of that aeroplane. might be a bit of sibling. So most of the grooming now will still be done by the adults. They will sort of pseudo-groom. They will lick themselves and, and, and each other, but not really properly just yet. And you can see that even at this age, those um, lying on top of each other like adults do um, quite often, tired kitties had a long walk and you can see all the, the colorations or cub spots 
that are on them. And the reason that they have these spots is uh, to help with a little bit of um, camouflage um, when they are hiding in the bush while the mothers are out hunting. And they're now avoid annoying the auntie. It'd be quite funny if they start trying to suckle on her and she doesn't have any milk yet. <laughs> so the interesting thing is that if that ooh see look at that immediate hiss from this uh, this other lioness as the cubs walk close to her she's gr hissing at them a little bit of growling as well so not as tolerant of the cubs obviously as the other two and the cubs took cue and kept a little bit far away so she's moved past they've moved past that growly lioness and they've moved through to the other two um, and it looks like all three now are going to start suckling. But mom obviously is feeling she's a bit low in, in the milk. This other lioness is actually growling even at the adult lionesses as they move. Um, I've got a feeling that this could have been the lioness we heard about that was to, south of us um, mating with the Matimbas. I can see mom is definitely, oh, it looks like she might succumb. Obviously, their teeth will have started developing once they, if they are very hungry and they start feeding aggressively. Um, oh. You can hear her growling. This lioness has come closer, but she's still growling at the cubs, even though she's moved closer. Um, and they will nurse up to six, seven months, but they will start eating meat from even this age. They'll start eating a little bit of meat. You can hear that soft growling. So if we have a look at this lioness that's closest to us now, and we had that report of mating lions to the south of us, I'm pretty convinced that this is possibly the same lioness. If we look, she's got a bit of scarring and almost looks like some old bite marks around her neck, and that would be from mating with that Matimba male who's lying up at 25 meters from here. you can see and then further down her back some scratches that look quite fresh there we go you can see those scratches there but it's difficult to be 100 percent sure there are quite a few different sticks lionesses around um, and they are do split up quite often 
Um, and the fact that the male is lying up so far from her makes me wonder if maybe it's not towards the end of their mating or uh, maybe even the pseudo estrus because the male if she was in full estrus would literally be following her around incessantly this to sort of just try sneak in so it's possible that that could be a little boy he did look a little bit bigger than the other two as well and even at this age Especially if the cubs are quite hungry, sort of when the female first gets back after hunting, after leaving them for a few days, um, you'll see um, that that aggression that lions display while feeding will be shown um, even at this really young age uh, over competition for, for milk and for teats. This could be quite interesting now, come wide, come wide, with this female that's been aggressive. She's still tolerating the cubs, but she lifts her head, she flattens her ears, growls. Um, and also the fact that this is the one that's pushing closer, it was the one who was on the main teeth there, the one who sort of had that male line stance to the, trying to dominate the whole, the whole section of mom's belly. Also, I mean, they're generally a little bit more brave, so they'll, they'll, they'll take a few more chances. You can hear that snarling. Even though the, the cubs aren't moving closer, this female closest to us is, is not 100% comfortable with their presence. And there we can see a little bit of grooming. So they do groom themselves, but they're obviously not adept at it, and they rely heavily on um, the mother and the other members of the pride to do the grooming. But they will start practicing even at this very young age. So unfortunately, unable to move at the moment. Um, there's a vehicle directly behind us, um, but I will try have a look at which male that is a little bit later. But currently we are cemented to this spot, and to be completely honest, I'm quite happy to be cemented this close to three little lion clubs. So I just gotta be on the game drive for a second, standing by. I'm not 100% sure at the moment. There are three stations in here at the moment. Um, I think there's possibly still one standing by. Uh, if not, you're more than welcome to take second standby. Okay, 
Okay, so that's affirmative. You'll be stand by two. Um, I'll be moving out in the next sort of uh, eight minutes, and I'll let you know as soon as I am out. The males just stood up at the back there, jean -Dre. So the answer to which male line that was, he stood up briefly, it is the hairy-bellied um, Matimba, um, and he just moved a little bit into the shade. Uh, Margaret, welcome Margaret, on uh, the 4th of July at Sunrise Safari. Margaret would like to know if this other female got a little bit more aggressive um, with the cubs, would the mother defend? I definitely think she would, Margaret, if the female sort of overstepped the boundaries. I think she would take an aggressive stance towards um, this other female. Welcome on this sunrise safari. Dave would like to know, is it possible that this extra lioness could be the grandmother of the cubs? It is very possible, as well as that she could be a, a great aunt or even a, an aunt or sister to these. As I said, it's very difficult to tell the difference um, at the moment, and especially since we haven't really had the best sightings of, of them yet. But it is possible, Dave, that she could be the grandmother. She is definitely, to me, she looks a bit older than the other two lionesses. So guys, we're going to cross back to Scotty quickly. He's just going to keep give you an update on what's been going on. And uh, then we will be back for the last few minutes with these little bundles of joy. So we'll see you a little later. Welcome back, everyone. And uh, what an interesting sighting it sounds like you're having with Brent and the sticks lioness and their little cubs I certainly must say I'm a little bit jealous even though VM and myself have been incredibly fortunate this morning we've spent just about three hours with Karula we've just lost visual of her now in a very thick area west of Treehouse Dam but we've got a good idea of where to come and look for her again this afternoon and that's certainly going to be my plan and I look forward to it I hope you've enjoyed this morning we've shared with you it's been so much fun, action-packed, and some really quality sightings along the way. A big thanks to VM on camera, who I've thrown around uh, a couple of times during the off-roading we've been doing to keep up with Karula. And also a big thanks to Tara in Final Control and Nikki, who's been lending her hand. From myself, Scott, it's been a pleasure, and look forward to the next safari with you all a little bit later on. See you next time. Welcome back. Um, hasn't it been an absolutely spectacular 4th of July uh, sunrise safari? Uh, lucky enough to see Karula, the queen of Juma, and some Ellie's, and now a little treat on the top at the end, um, being able to spend some more time with the sticks cubs. So we're going to keep as much time looking at them as possible. This little one closest to us is being very cute at the moment, sort of pseudo grooming and playing a little bit. So let's have a quick look at them. Um, while I give you the rest of the closing. So guys, thanks very, very much for joining us. Um, it's always a great pleasure to have our regular viewers with us. And if there are any new viewers, welcome. And hopefully we'll see you for the sunset safari again. Oh, there's a bit of hissing. 
Uh, and very interesting, this dynamic now that we've had a third lioness to the sticks that we've generally only seen with the two um, females. And it is possible, it's almost definite that she is related. And we're definitely going to follow up here um, on the Sunset Safari to see what's been happening with them during the day. Hopefully they decide to stay visiting us um, here on Juma and don't decide to head south again. But they look quite tired, uh, so I don't think they're going to move too far. And there's always a great uh, privilege and pleasure to be able to share our passion um, for the African bush with you, wherever you might be in the world. And we really do appreciate your questions, uh, so please keep sending them in. And remember, all your screenshots, pop them on Facebook, pop them on, uh, on Twitter, use the hashtag Safari Live. And for the last few seconds of drive, I'm going to keep quiet and let you enjoy these absolute beautiful little lion cubs uh, that are the three little sticks cubs and their mothers and aunts and possibly even grandmothers with them.